This morning, we welcome you to this day, the 25th of April, 2021. So we welcome all who are here and all of you who are online, who are watching uh, live. We welcome you as well. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship. Hymn number 447, Trust and Obey, in our opening prayer. come together this morning to come and worship together, to share and love with one another, to have fellowship with one another. Why? Because of you. We pray, Lord, that you'll take charge of this service, that you'll bless each one that has come, and to follow those that could not make it for whatever reason, that you will be with them. Let them know that in our hearts, our minds, and in our prayers. Father, take charge of your service. Guide and direct us all. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. 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 May be seated. In the way of announcements on the bottom of your morning worship, you'll notice just a, a few things that, are be, that will be taking place coming up in May as May is around. Um, the first Thursday in May, May the 6th, is National Day of Prayer. I'd ask you to pray for our country, not just on that day, but continually as we pray for our country, our leaders, and all. May 9th, the second, Wednesday, the second Sunday in May, is Mother's Day, so remember all the mothers. Uh, the 23rd is Pentecost Day. The 31st is Memorial Day, also 
prior to that is Memorial Weekend. Uh, officially, I guess that it is the the first full weekend, the first time when a lot of people will be going traveling maybe this year and going on vacation and doing different things as far as Memorial Weekend. Unfortunately, June the 1st is the beginning of hurricane season. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, it's a part of us. And, I, and, and, with, and, and with that, just pray for uh, for Clarence back there and all the people too that's involved with the preparation for hurricane season. There's a lot involved behind the scenes and uh, Clarence back there, uh, he's got a lot on his, on his plate that he's preparing for now and will be throughout until, uh, what, November? Absolutely. Yeah. Until, yeah, until November. So he and, he and the rest of his crew that, that they'll be doing, preparing for, hopefully for nothing that will come, but be prepared in the, for that. So the official day is starting is June. As we know, we, we basically have to worry about it someplace in August and September and October is when we get it, but who knows? Like last year, I'm hoping that it'll be a mile. It won't be like last year, huh, Clarence? Yes, sir. Last year was terrible. Um, today will be the last day that we'll be collecting for uh, Annie Armstrong Easter offering. There are offering envelopes in there. If you would like to give over and above the working of the church, you can do so. Um, we have collected $205, and that goes for work being done by the Southern Baptist missionaries throughout the U.S. And 100% of that goes to that. You can find us on Facebook and on YouTube, and many are probably watching and looking right now and at us on Facebook or YouTube, and we welcome them as well. Um, I would like to wish Johnny Garrett Jr. a happy birthday. His birthday will be tomorrow. So happy birthday to Johnny Garrett Jr. He's in the back with the video. He'll be here later, but um, before you leave, you can wish him a happy birthday. As he, his birthday will be tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, Jake and Francis Kirkle will be celebrating their anniversary this coming Tuesday. So happy anniversary to both Jake and Miss Francis on their upcoming anniversary. For those who come and those who watch online, <coughs> Uh, on Wednesday night Bible study, not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we will begin a different time. Um, so the first Wednesday in May, which would be May 5th, not this coming Wednesday, we will be starting at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The reason for that is that we anticipate some uninvited guests coming in the evening time. As many are aware, we have mayflies that come in May. And so in order for us to get out of here before it gets dark, uh, we're going to be having Wednesday night Bible study from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 p.m. So that way you give enough time to where it's still light outside, to where we don't have to worry about fighting off all the mayflies that, that may or may not come. I'm hoping this year that for a miracle and that the Lord will not allow us to be battling the Mayflies this year, but so far uh, we've been battling them every year uh, for a long time. So anyhow, so be aware of that. Uh, I'll make the announcement again next Sunday, but remember now this Wednesday, it'll be the regular time, 6.30 to 7.30, but the following Wednesday we'll begin that, and we'll do that um, probably until the end of June. So we'll have it all of May and all of June. Uh, and then we'll discuss whether or not we want to continue to have it from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. or do we want to go back at the regular time of 6.30 to 7.30. And so we'll see how this works out for everybody who comes and everybody who watches online uh, for the Bible study with the women as well. So be aware of those things that are going on, so just to make it aware. Any other announcements? Anything else we need to be aware of? <clears throat> of anything else? If not, Mr. Al will come at this time and he'll lead us in another hymn. Hymn number 455, I Must Tell Jesus.
There are written a few prayers and requests and concerns, and I'd ask you to continue to pray and to remember the many people and the many things that we have on our prayer list. Uh, Christian missionaries throughout the world, all of all denominations, military personnel, people on the front line, policemen, firemen, etc., uh, nurses, doctors, uh, remember them in prayer. Pray for all who are in the nursing homes. Uh, do remember them and some who are dear to us, Miss Virginia Hall, uh, Debbie's uh, sister and, and mom, Beverly and Miss Fulkerson, as well as others in the nursing home that you know of. Continue to pray for them and to remember them in prayer as well. Um, of course, do pray for those who are dealing with different things. Johnny Garrett Jr., as he continues to battle and have his treatments for his cancer, Remember him in prayer and pray for him, as well as Ms. Nicole and others as well on our prayer list that are dealing with different health issues in our, that are there. Uh, Ginger's uh, sister and brother-in-law, May and G, remember both of them in prayer, especially G. Uh, he's not doing too well and pray for the family. Uh, pray for our country, our leaders, as well as our city. Remember them all in prayer. Uh, Debbie Garrett's uh, daughter-in-law, Katrina Garrett, continue to remember her in prayer with her physical problems and ailments that she too is dealing with. Again, just pray for different ones and different family members and different friends and people as well. Any other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us? Ms. Linda. Um, Mama had a tumble last night. Uh -oh. She was in her room and she wanted to stand up in her chair. She's in a wheelchair. She wants to stand up. Yeah. She fell and scratched her back, but that was the only thing they could find wrong with her. So she's fine. Okay. So, but they have to call me and tell me. And sure. Uh, she still thinks that she can just get up and walk. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And okay. Thanksgiving, um, Kelly's feeling a lot better. Oh, she good. I'm and glad never, none of us ever got it. And that's a prayer of Thanksgiving too, that none of that you or Danny or anybody else. And everybody nobody else, just her. Just her fiance. I think he had a stroke. Okay. 
Okay, well that's good though, but and I'm glad she is over too and prayer yes, Thanksgiving. Good, yes. Other prayer requests. Ms. Brandy. Um, we don't have a whole lot of the details because we've been short staffed so we gotta keep working. But um a coworker of mine, Ms. Ruby, hasn't been back for a while. Okay. So we found out on Friday that she actually was in a car accident. Oh wow. Recently we don't have a lot of details as I said, but Okay. Please pray for Ms. Ruby that everything turns out okay. Will do. Healing and safe. Yes, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yes, when I remember your co worker, Ms. Ruby. Okay, will do. Debbie. I want us to pray for Shell. Shell's sugar is dropping really low. She's having a lot of trouble um, yeah. managing her diabetes. So okay. I'd like for us to pray for Shell. All right, so remember Shell Armstrong with her battle with her diabetes and her health as well. So, so pray for her as well. We sure will. Ginger. Just continue prayer for each one in uh, my family and also uh, remember Mary Rushing. Yes. She's having a rough time. And okay. Irene with the loss of their husband. Sure. She, you know, continue okay. to remember uh, Linda's friend Barbara. Yes. Uh, she's okay. in real needs of, of right. prayer. Yes. yes. Prayer Thanksgiving to have a real girlfriend here with us today. Yeah, it's always good to have Penny with us. Yeah. So, yeah. What about Will? Oh, well, yeah, well, I love having Will. <laughs> See, Will, I'm, 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 I'm here for you, Will. Uh, uh, I'm trying to help you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows his mama loves him. <laughs> and all the rest of them. Well, I'm glad Will's doing better, too, because he ate a trap last week, and I'm, I'm glad he's doing better. And, and uh, Melissa, too, both of them are doing good. What's the, what's the latest on G? Anything different? I haven't heard anything else. Uh, I know Melissa took him to the doctor and they did cortisone shots in his shoulders, I think, and his legs to help the pain there. Okay. Uh, but already May told Dolores when she talked to her that he was starting to complain and that's pretty quick. So oh. they can't give him more right. often, you know. Sure, yes. But he's having a rough time. He's suffering with his shoulders, legs. Right. And just not feeling well. Yeah. So, so remember, G. When, when will he be 99? Is he 99 already? No, he's 98. I don't remember when his birthday is. Okay. He may have just turned 98. Okay. I don't Either know. way, he's 98 years old, and uh, right. so I just need to remember G. and May and the family prayer. We sure do appreciate that. Yes. Danny. Prayer Thanksgiving for hopefully being back on a normal schedule. For yes. A while. And traveling mercies. We've got some started in the middle of last week and next two weeks we've got 75 to 100 people that will be going down to the Cape. Some fly and some will be driving down right. uh, for the team that will be prepping it for lunch. Okay. Travel the mercies for all of those people. Yes, travel the mercies for all of them. In case you, you haven't missed, have missed a year, they're shipping the, uh, the, the ship that was made here, Misha with Danny and them, and that's being going by boat. Has, when will it arrive there? It's uh, in it and out. Okay. Offloaded, yeah. So pray for all of them, and, and remember all of all the people involved with this spaceship, and uh, that's going to be launching. That's um, going that way, and all the people involved doing that, and, and Danny and all them over there at Mishu, and what's taking place with that, and then of course what's going to be taking place with all that. So appreciate that. So remember all of them in prayer. Tinka. Um, I would like. Everybody, please pray for my cousin Tony. Okay. She had a heart attack about five years ago, and now they've discovered that she has a heart problem. Okay. She has a lot of other health problems as well, but um, I'm kind of concerned about this heart murmur. And also, recently she's lost 25 pounds for absolutely no reason. Okay. She's already the size of a green bean. Okay. And so she really can't afford to lose any weight. Okay. And uh, they can't find why she's lost the weight. So just keep her in prayer. Okay, we'll pray for your cousin Tony. She'll sure will. Yes. She lives right here behind the church. Okay, okay, that's the way I live. Okay, we'll keep her in prayer. She sure will. Any others? Debbie, Gary. Just remember Beverly in the nursing home. Uh, her nurse caught COVID this week, so that put Beverly in lockdown, so that's really hard for Beverly. Sure. So just remember her. My mom, she worries about Beverly. Right. And uh, 
Johnny's wife will be having surgery May 10th. May 10th, okay. They're going to operate on her back? Yes. Okay. Okay, so remember Katrina in prayer, she'll be having surgery for her back. She has some problems there. And again, uh, Debbie's mom is focused, and she, how old is mom? 94. Yes, yeah, see, she's in her 90s. Not <coughs> as well, so remember her in prayer, and, and of course, our daughter Beverly and, and them, and all that. Yeah, you know, we should do so. Appreciate that. Yes, remember them. Others, pray, pray for Clarence Poe and, and the rest of his, uh, all of the, all of his people. Uh, as again, as they are dealing with and have already prepared for the hurricane season, and are now preparing still, and will be throughout the whole summer. And no telling what will take place. So pray for all our leaders now um, and what takes place uh, with everything because you never know. And, you know, and sometimes during the thunderstorms and disasters, we don't think of it much, but there's a lot of preparation behind the scenes that goes on with that as well with them. You know, uh, because sometimes we have, we have a, a lot more going on than maybe dealing with a hurricane when it's just a typical tropical, a typical storm coming up and, and we get a flash flooding or a whole lot of rain and water and everything else and, and they have to deal with all of that. So pray for those who, who are dealing with all that. We, we don't seem to uh, understand that, hey, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes when the bad weather does happen in this area and we need to pray for them. So do, do pray for them and remember all of them in prayer. Uh, traveling mercies for those who are traveling or will be traveling. I know Sandy and, and Abby, they'll be traveling uh, next weekend. So traveling mercies for them as they'll be traveling. Um, but traveling mercies for all who are traveling. Just back and forth to work. That's all we need. Ginger. Uh, I forgot to mention, Frank, I talked to Margie Meredith. Okay. And she asked us to remember that because she got their house sold already. Okay. Um, and they'll be moving into the other house close to where her daughter Jennifer, Jennifer. lives. Okay. Um, I think she has to wait until like the end of May, but just remember them as they're packing up and okay. getting ready to move and okay. yes. all right. you know, over there. Okay. She has to remember them. Sure. Now you know Margie Meredith is Mr. Billy's sister. So now you got more information? Yeah, so you got more information now? You got that? <laughs> Anything you want to know about Margie, talk to Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Margie did call me this time. I figured she did. <laughs> probably about after she called me. <laughs> yeah, probably so, yeah. I, I figured she did. That's why I'm messing with you. Yeah. Uh, that's good to hear that. That's good that they're doing that. Yeah. Uh, in, in relationship with moving, do pray for my daughter as well, Melinda. Uh, they'll be moving, and I know it's a ways away, but she's going to be preparing and everything. They'll be moving sometime at the end of September from Texas and moving to Mississippi. So they'll be, they'll be heading to Mississippi up in the Biloxi area. Uh, Jason Verges, uh, her husband, is going to be an instructor at Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi. So that's where he's going to be stationed. And so they're going to be moving down this way. Uh, in September. So meanwhile, uh, she's got to prepare everything. Plus, they're looking online for a house to buy in uh, Mississippi. So she's going to be going through all of that as well. So just pray for her and the preparation what she's going to be dealing with also. So yeah, so she's going to be dealing with that. Anyone else? Let's go to Lord in prayer. Almighty God, as we come again before you, Lord, in prayer, and we lift up all of these prayers and concerns, Lord, we pray and we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. Lord, the many that have been lifted up and here, and I'm sure on Facebook and live, and the many unspoken as well, we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. The many that are dealing with different health issues and health problems, Lord, we pray for your healing power. We pray for your help in, in, in easing their pain and to comfort them and to be with them as well. For the many, many in the nursing homes, be with them, Ms. Virginia Hall, Ms. Fulkerson, Beverly, and many others, Lord, that are in the nursing homes and the nursing home uh, facility, uh, the faculty there, 
as well. Be with them and be with the many people dealing with that. We pray for our country, our leaders, and our city, and we ask for your help. Be with, again, with the many prayer requests for family, for friends, and for others that have been mentioned. This one, Ms. Ruby, who was involved in an automobile accident, we lift her up. We pray for G and May and the family and to be with them. For Katrina in, in an upcoming surgery in May, we pray for her and we lift her up. For Danny Hall, as he has to do a procedure uh, next month, we lift him up and we pray for him. We just thank you, Lord, for the many answered prayer, and we thank you, Lord, for the many things you have done and are doing, and just ask for your continual help, guidance, and leadership. And Lord, we pray for the many, many people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. They may know about Jesus, and they may even hear about Jesus, but Lord, I pray for salvation for those who don't know Christ in their hearts and their lives, and we pray for them. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand at this time as Al comes and leads us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 502. Open my eyes that I may see. <laughs>
before we look into the Word of God, let me try to share with you a song, a song that goes with what we want to look at today, coming from John chapter 4. Um, it's Fill My Cup, Lord. <clears throat> like the woman at the well, I was seeking all things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasure earthly things of war. But none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. And so my brother, if the things this world gave you, Leave hungers that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you. If you kneel to him and humbly pray. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. This is, goes along with what we want to look at today. From John chapter 4, and the woman at the well that Jesus actually talked to while he walked upon the face of this earth. Now understand that there in this, Jesus is on his way to Galilee, probably Capernaum, from Judea. Now, probably from the region of Bethany of uh, Judea where he and his disciples were baptizing people in the Jordan, but Jesus himself never actually baptized anyone. His disciples baptized, but Jesus never baptized anyone. I thought that was pretty interesting in and of itself. So somewhere, so in between now, we get to Jordan down south. I call it Jordan South at Bethany, and Galilee is up north. If you look at your map uh, later on, you can see that around Capernaum. In between in between the Jordan uh, at Bethany and Galilee was a town or a region called Samaria. Now the problem comes in and it was a centuries old feud between the Jews and the Samaritans. Now Samaritans were half Jew, half Gentile. To the pure Jew, the Samaritans were considered unclean. And no way would a pure Jew come in contact with or even come near a Samaritan. You know, uh, you know, almost some of the things that we hear about some of the feuds, the Hatfields and McCoys and other things as well. Well, this is what we see happening. This has been going on for years and years and years down the line 
uh, concerning it. So in order to avoid a pure Jew going through Samaria, they would go literally completely around and take a long way around from the south part of, of the area to get to the north part of the area. So they would completely uh, do it. Now, of course, the shortest distance from basically Bethany of Jordan and all the other places there would be go right through Samaria. But again, because of the feud and because of their thought, they would not do it. However, Jesus, there was no problem with him going through Samaria or any problem with him speaking, preaching, teaching, ministering to anyone. Remember, he always associated himself and he always talked to tax collectors and prostitutes, which upset the Pharisees and the Sadducees many times over. But it didn't matter to Jesus. What mattered to Jesus was the fact that these people needed to hear the Word of God. That these people, too, needed to know that he came to die on the cross for them. Sinners, just like the Jews, that they, too, all needed Jesus Christ. And this is what he came to do, to relate to them. Again, what mattered most to Jesus, and still matters most, is a person's soul. That that person will not be lost for all eternity and come to know Jesus Christ. And if you notice in verse 4, as it says, he had to go through Samaria. Evidently, he had an appointment with someone in or from Samaria, and unknowingly to his disciples, because he'll be by himself, and his disciples are going to go into uh, sidecar and get some food and everything, Jesus is at the well. Now this well is located about a half a mile from the city. So for the people in the city, they would have to travel a half a mile. Most of them came early morning when it wasn't so hot, or late in the evening, again, when it's not so hot. Very few came at high noon that we're going to see here. And so again, his disciples have gone into the city to get food, and Jesus is sitting by the well, and again, it is high noon when very few, but yet, he knows that someone is coming. He had to go through it. So notice, first of all, the well itself and what takes place at the well while his disciples are in the city getting food and Jesus is by himself. Notice the first 15 verses of chapter 4. The, Pharisee, the Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So when the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and he went once more to Galilee. So again, he's going from Judea to Galilee, going from the south part of the region to the north part, and basically, that's his home front around Galilee, Capernaum, and all that. Um, now, it says in verse 4, he had to go through Samaria. So he came, in the, he came to a town in, Sam, in Samaria called Sychar, or Sychar, near the plot of the ground of Jacob, uh, the ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus was tired as he was from his journey, and, the, and he sat down by the well, and it's about the sixth hour. Now, the sixth hour in, in the Roman time would be 6 p.m., but we're dealing with Jewish time. So the sixth hour in Jewish time is 12 noon, because in Jewish time it began at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., okay? So we're talking about 12 noon here. Now, yours may have that, it may not, but that's what we're dealing with. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. You, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, Now if you knew the gift of God and who it, was, who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Oh, this really made the curiosity of the woman. Now, sir, you have nothing to draw your water with. The well is deep. Where, you, 
where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well, and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herd? Then Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him, he will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him springs of water welling up to eternal life. Ah, the woman said to him, Hey, I need this. Sir, give me this water so that I won't have to keep, so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming to this well to draw the water. Now, again, this well is a half a mile from the city, uh, known as Jacob's well. Now, Jesus, he's tired. You see, Jesus was, as we've mentioned, he's fully human now. He, gets, he got tired doing his ministry here many times. So here he is. He's waiting by the well, tired, but he knows someone is coming. Now, whether he knew it was a woman or not, I do not know. Whether he not, I thought he was another man, either way. But he had a divine appointment given to him by the Father. Now, again, this is up to debate with many scholars, but many of them are in, are in agreement that when it says in verse 4, it, now he had to go through Samaria, many of them believe that he knew that this woman or this person was coming and that he would be meeting someone there as well. And notice, when the woman arrives, what is the first thing that Jesus do? He opens the conversation and he asks the woman, give me a drink. Uh, so he asked a favor of the woman. Now, the woman is stunned beyond belief. Not only is she stunned that a Jew is talking to a Samaritan, but also stunned that a man, a Jewish man, is also talking to a woman. Again, the custom back then was that, again, it was considered basically improper immoral, whatever you want to ask, for a rabbi to speak or to greet a woman in public. And do you know, they could, they did not even speak or greet their own wives in public. Everything had to be done inside. It was considered improper back then for even a husband and a wife, for the husband to speak to the woman in private. In other words, when they're out, the woman had to be quiet. And the man did not speak to the woman at all. Whatever he says, that's the way it went. So she's shocked here. Here she is, not expecting Jesus to speak at all, and he asked for her, give me a drink of water. So again, this is out of character. So what is Jesus doing here? He's breaking down the barriers in order for her to come to know the truth of God's word. You see, he's not worrying about the, the social uh, customs aside. Just like when he talks to the tax collectors and he talked to the prostitutes many times over and over again. He wasn't worried about what the other people thought. His main concern was to tell them the things of God. And that should be our concern. Don't worry about what people think. We need to let people know things of God and what God has said. See, this is why he came. He didn't come to continue to condemn sinners. He came to save sinners. He came so that people can have hope. We're living in a dark world today, and the only light that is in this dark world is Jesus Christ. And we need to let people know about this light and let them see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel here. Now, again, he's concerned about her soul, but no, understand, when we get to the end, it's not just her that, we are, that Jesus is concerned about. You see, it's going to be the whole town and what's going to happen once and what takes place with her. So here he is. Jesus points out that he could give her living water. So she takes it literal, which she should, okay? She's thinking, okay. Oh, if I get some water like this, I don't have to worry about drinking this all the time. Man, that would be great. I don't have to come to this well. I don't have to come here at 12 noon. I don't have to do all of this. Man, if I get some of this water that's living, but this water here that we drink out of the faucet or the bottle, every time we drink it, what happens? We continually get thirsty. It doesn't satisfy. Only for a short while. But yet, 
He tells her, the water I give you will satisfy you. Now, again, what we see here is that Jesus has created a desire, I think, in this woman's heart and in the mind for the spiritual water, this living water. Yet, her thinking is where? It's back on the well. You see, she's going back to the well again. Give me this water. But you have nothing to draw the water out so I can get this water. What do you have to draw? The water is, the well is deep. See, she's still literally thinking of this rather than the spiritual connotation. You know, it's almost like the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus just a, while, just a little ways back. Jesus was relating to him the spiritual things of God. And Nicodemus being a very religious man, he didn't get it either. He was thinking literally, oh, how can a man be born again? How can a man go into his mother's womb a second time? You don't get it, Nicodemus. He's talking about the spiritual rebirth. You see, every, believe, every sinner needs to be spiritually reborn. And the only way that you can do that is by repenting of sin and putting trust in Jesus Christ. So now he talks to this woman. And he's telling her, if you knew, notice the 10, the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Give it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to jump through any hoops. He's going to give it. And all you have to do is ask. That's all you have to do. And it will quench it. You see, he's offering her the living water that will quench not just what she puts in her mouth that goes in her body, but it will also quench the soul. You see, it does both. You know, however, before she can receive this living water, there are some conditions that need to be met. And even for a person today, every sinner, before they can come to know Jesus Christ, there are conditions that have to be met. One, I have to recognize I'm a sinner. And secondly, I need to repent of it and come to know Jesus Christ as the one who died for me. So the same thing is today, for we have to understand from the Word of God and what it says. In Romans chapter 3, and verse 23, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That doesn't mean some have sinned and some are okay. It says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And prior to that, it's also spoken in God's Word, as it says in Romans 3 and verses 9 and following, what shall we conclude then? Are we any better? Now, when, it, when, when, the, when Paul was speaking to this, he was talking about us Jews. Are we Jews any better? Are we any better than anybody else? And he says, not at all. We have already made the choice that Jews and Gentiles alike are under the sin. See, they're saying, there is no one who's righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands and no one who seeks God. All have turned away and have turned and have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. You see, no matter what you do, you can't earn it. And Jesus says, I'm going to give it. All you have to do is for it. However, certain things must be done. So that brings us to the second part that we see with the woman herself. Now, prior to this, I don't know and we don't know if a more of a conversation was done prior to Jesus showing her and revealing to her in verses 16 through 29 certain things. So look at the woman and look at what happens and look at what here Jesus relates to her. As she asked Jesus, Give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep drawing my water, coming here and drawing the water. He told her, call your husband and come back. Ah, I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus said to her, you know, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers, they worship on the mountain, but you Jews, you claim that the place where they meet to worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus declared, believe me, woman, a time is coming when we will worship the Father neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem. 
Now you Samaritans, you worship what you do not know, and we worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and now has come, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for, that, for they are, that, are the kind of worshipers the Father seek. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. And the woman said, you know, I know the Messiah is coming, the Christ. See, they were all expecting the, the Messiah to come, the Christ. And when he comes, guess what he's going to do? He's going to explain everything to me. Not you, the prophet, but uh, the Messiah. I can just, just hear all wheels turning. Then Jesus declared, I who speak am he. Then the disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with the woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking to her? Then leaving her water jar, the, water, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Again, we see here the woman. Now, what is Jesus doing here as he asked Jesus for some of his living water? See, what Jesus is relating to her, just like he does today with all of us and all sinners everywhere, she must recognize that she's not just okay. She must recognize that she is a sinner in need to address the issue and not just think everything is okay. Oh, sure, I've done a few things wrong. Sure, I've sinned a little bit. But yet, it's not okay. We can't just sweep those sins under the rug. But you see, every time we do, that, that piles and get higher and higher. We have to deal with sin. Amen. We have to nip it in the bud. And the only way to do that is by confessing it and giving it to Jesus Christ and asking Him to help us with that sin or sins that are in our lives and not say, I'm okay. Notice He tells her, she has had five husbands and the man she's living with now is not her husband, so what's happening? She's living in an adulterous relationship or an immoral relationship with the man. So she's living in sin. So understand, there can be no conversion without conviction. And there can be no conviction without repentance. Must repent of it. Deal with the sin, not just cover it up or say, ah, oh, it's no big deal. You know, every time we as believers, we sin, and every time we say it's okay, we're walking all over the cross. And we should not. We need to deal with it and say, Lord, help me, forgive me. I've sinned, I've done wrong. Even if it's a lie, or even if it's just some little thing that we think that's so insignificant. Do you realize that sometimes people watch or listen to what we say when we tell them that we are Christians? That we are a believer? They, they literally, they look at us. They watch what we do. And then, we, then, they, then when we do things wrong and we don't confess it or we say, oh, it's no big deal, they say, wow, is that what a Christian is supposed to be like? No, it's not. You know, listen, instead of addressing the sin, notice what she does. What does she do? She tries to detour. She goes in a different direction rather than addressing the problem in her own life. However, all of this plays right into the hands of Jesus. When we detour and we do something else, it plays right into the hands of God. He deals with us, even when we try to go in a different direction. Notice, Jesus chooses to make himself known to this Samaritan woman, and this is one of the few times we see where she too is waiting for the Messiah to come, and then he, and then he tells her point blank, I am the Messiah that you have been waiting for all of these years. I am him. I am the person. Again, I think at this point, the woman is probably under conviction of her sin. And even though she's talking about worship, Jesus' statement to her that he, and that, that he, was, that he was the Messiah 
may have hit her for a loop. Wow, you are the Messiah. Now, this is the same man who just a few minutes ago simply asked, will you please give me a drink of water? And, and again, go back, he says, if you knew who it was that asked you for a drink, you would ask him and he would have given you living water. So who is he? So what is he telling her? I am the Messiah that you have been waiting for. And all you have to do is ask me. And I will give you living water. I, again, I, I think what, what is taking place here, that she finally meets it. And then something happened to this woman. She left the jar that she was supposed to get the water out the well with. And she goes back in to the town to tell others. Again, we see a change has come out and taken place with this woman. And the disciples now, they show up. And what happens? Why is he talking to a woman? Wow, what is going on here? They're, they're, they're dumbfounded. And in the course of time, notice what Jesus tells the disciples in verse 31 through, 30, uh, through 38. The disciples said to each other in 33, could someone have brought him food? He says, I have food to eat which you have known nothing about. See, his food was to relate to people the things of God. He says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do not say four months more and then a harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvest. Even now, the reaper draws his wages. Even now, he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the growers and the reaper may be glad together. This, thus saying this, one sows and another reaps. It is true. I sent you to reap what you had not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. You know, sometimes we do the same thing. We may reap the benefits what other people have labored. Or we may go out and labor, and others may reap a harvest of what we have done. All of this is a plan of God. You see, remember what the Word of God says. One waters, the other plants. But God makes it grow. So, so we see this here coming up, and look what Jesus is telling his disciples. See, don't worry about whether or not you reap, whether or not you're, you, you're the one that's watering, or whether or not you're the one that's planting. We both have the things to do for God. But it's God who does the work. It is God who makes it grow. It is God who does everything. It is He who comes in the heart. And so in the heart of this woman is taking place. So look at what happens now in verse 39 through 42. Again, remember, Jesus is dealing with the woman but it's not just the woman he's dealing with, but it's the whole town. And look at what happened just by talking to one person. This is what happens today sometimes. We talk to one person, and we never know how God is going to continue to have that done and what's going to be taking place with that from one person. Now it says in verse 39, here we see the witness, the word, and the Savior of the world. Many of the Samaritans, and she, now she's going into town now, high noon, and she is telling everyone, come see the man, and, and she said, now you go back, in verse 29, it says, come see a man who told me everything I ever did, and notice he doesn't say, she doesn't say he's the Messiah, she asked the question, could this be the Christ? And, he, and notice, he put, he put it out to the town, you tell me. So again, in verse 39, it says, Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the women's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with him. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Then they said to the woman, No longer... We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Not that he may be, but that we know again. Now, what a wonderful thing that we see here. 
they came to the living water, the people from the town, and they drank from this living water. They drank. Jesus later on in John chapter 7 and in verse 37 and 38, he stood up to the people in another place and he says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, streams of living water will flow within him. You see that person welling up in him. That person will become a different person. Also, what many people also don't read and takes place, at the end of the book of Revelation, what takes place there, in Revelation chapter 22, at the very end of it, and in verse 17, here the word of God says, the spirit and the bride says, come. Let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. And that free water of life is Jesus Christ. And partake of it and come to know Him. Again, notice what was taking place here. The people came from the town to meet Jesus. And for two days, they had this wonderful, wonderful Bible study. I wish I knew what Jesus told them the whole two days. It had to be quite awesome. You know, quite awesome for two days. And, and they urged him. Notice it says they urged him to stay. And he stayed two more days. Unlike the other people in his own hometown, urged him to leave. To get out of Dodge. They didn't want to hear anymore. But here we see these people embracing the things of God. And saying unto them, please stay. Please tell us more. Please let us know. And here Jesus here is having this wonderful Bible study. See how important it is to be grounded in the Word of God. It's very important that we ground ourselves in the things of God and trust the Word that was being taught. Why? So that we can walk with the Lord each and every day. And notice, what did they do? They put their trust in this man. And they put their trust in him as the Messiah. As it says in here, we no longer believe just because of what you say, but now we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. After speaking to him and after hearing him for two days, they knew without a shadow of a doubt that indeed he was the Messiah. And they recognized him. And, and again, he's not just for the Jews as the Jews thought. He's for everyone. It says everyone who comes to him can have eternal life. Everyone can have this living water. All they have to do is recognize their own sin, repent of it, and put trust in him. And it only comes by trusting in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Again, don't fall for that old slogan from different unbelievers and different people throughout the world. There are not many ways to heaven. There is only one way. Amen. There's only one Savior. The Messiah came. He came some 2,000 years ago. He died on a cross for our sins. He, was, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. And then 40 days later, he ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of God, and one day we'll see him as he is. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through me. You know, because of that one person, because of this one woman, this notorious woman that probably the whole town knew about, she told everybody concerning the Christ. And they believed what she said. They came out and spoke. And after speaking and looking at Jesus, and revealing, and he revealed to them, what did they come to? He is the Christ. One person. You see, all it takes is one person. You reaching someone. See, we, I can only reach so many. You can only reach so many. But each one of us, we reach people, or we tell people, as God so leads, God and directs us to help us. He had an appointment, and this appointment knew that it affected not just the woman, 
but the whole town of Sychar. All of these Samaritans, they came. They came. These lost souls, these lost sinners, came to believe in Jesus Christ. There are many, many lost souls. There are lost sinners. There are lost people in your family, some of your friends, your co-workers, and maybe even you. You're here today. And the question is, is do you know Jesus Christ? You may know about him in your mind. You may even read about him. But do you know him in your heart? It's in the heart. Jesus says, from the heart these things come. See, it doesn't do any good to come and sit in church and not know Jesus Christ personally in your heart. It may make you feel good. But feeling good and having eternal life is two different things. Amen. The question is, is do you know that you have eternal life? And that one day, you'll stand before God and he'll say, come, welcome. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come. Can you know that for sure? If not, do it today. If God is speaking to you, you come. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, and if there's anyone whom you have spoken to and are telling them even now, come, come and drink of the living water. I pray that they will obey your word. And I pray, Lord, they will heed what you, would say, what you have tried to tell them today. And Lord, that each one, and if they, they do not know Jesus Christ today, come to know Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. If God has spoken to you today, you come as we sing hymn number 308. Pass me not, O Savior.
do us. Again, if you take nothing else from this, remember, God sent his son not to condemn, but to save. He can save and he came to save all sinners, everyone. And all you have to do is believe in him and what he did at Calvary. And he did it for you. God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That is awesome. Listen, we're not going to have eternal life on this earth, but we're going to have eternal life in heaven forever and ever. You know, I don't know about you, but as I grow older and older, I know this, and we realize this. When I was young, I didn't understand that. But now, as I get older, I understand it more and more. And one day, we'll be with the Lord. I pray you will too. We invite you to come back Wednesday night. This coming Wednesday, Bible study in the back, women's class, men's class, 6.30 to 7.30, this coming Wednesday, all invited. If not, come back next week. We invite you to come back next week. 9 o'clock Sunday school, from 9 to 10. 10 15, 10 20, who knows? Hey, whatever time it gets out. That's right, there you go, whatever time. But hey, hey, uh, even if you come late, you can come at 9 15 as well. That's fine too, 9 20. Just come on and enjoy uh, some Sunday school slash Bible study with your different classes. And if not, come for worship service at 10 30. Everyone is invited for that as well. May God bless and have a good rest of the day as well. I'll lead us in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come thanking you for all that you've done for us. Thanking you for your word, Father. And I pray that each person's heart was open to receive your word. And Father, there is someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, or someone that may be watching on, online, Father, that your word has touched their hearts, that Father, a seed is planted, and that that seed will grow. Be with us now as we leave to go our separate ways. Bring us back to worship again together. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.